Amal, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. What is business process outsourcing? Business process outsourcing is an extension of the company's business. So let's say a company wants to outsource its entire HR, we'll give it to another company to handle. Companies in US, UK and Australia outsource their customer service or a segment of their business to mostly countries that are less developed where labor is very cheap. So America, international client, has, have been outsourcing to India for a long time, since 1980. The Indian outsourcing industry is reported to be worth over 150 billion US dollars. How can Nigeria take some of this market share? Yes, Nigeria can. Uh, why not Nigeria? We have better English-speaking people. We speak with better accent. We have the same technology. We can use the same technology that the India is using. We have better timelines. So why not Nigeria? We have the talent. We have the people. We have the educated people. We can Nigeria can actually do much more than India because we are in a better position than India to serve the international market. So what do you think is stopping us? Lack of initiative, one. Um, high capital intensity intensive nature of setting up a business process outsourcing company, um, lack of awareness, uh, just to name a few. The outsourcing business relies heavily on technology. Do you have a computer science degree? No, I don't have a computer science degree. I actually read business admin and I went to Bayero University, Kano. So you don't have to have a degree in computer science to actually go into IT business. All you need to do is employ people with that, those particular skills to do the, the IT specific needs of the business. So tell us a bit about your experience. Why did you decide to go into this industry? Okay, we started with an IT training center in Kano. Um, by 2005, we've trained a lot of IT professionals and there are no jobs. We started researching on what we could do to provide employment for the people that we've trained. And I, I was dealing with India, a, a lot of Indians at the time, and because the training center was an NIT franchise. I looked at India, I researched on what India did, and I found out that uh, BPO at that time provided over 2.2 million jobs, and it kept on increasing by 15% every year uh, from what I researched on. So I said, I looked at all the requirements of setting up a business process outsourcing outfit. I saw that you need an English speaking people, the kind of technology that was supposed to be used, everything, and I saw that we could do it here in Nigeria. And I said, why not Nigeria? And I started working on um, establishing um, the company. As a woman in technology from the northern part of the country, um, what are some of the challenges that you've faced? Uh, of course, the most common, ch common challenge is to balance family and work, to make sure that the family does not suffer and the work does not suffer. So balancing that is, of course, very difficult. Then I found out people do not really take women, period seriously, not just Northern Nigeria women. So it is very hard for me as a, as a woman to sell what I do. So for instance, when I first started, I met a lot of people for investment. And one, they do not believe that a company in Nigeria can service the international market. Two, they do not believe that I, as a Northern Nigerian woman, can actually do this kind of business. So that's the most challenging part. Then, of course, the challenge is the environment. It is very difficult to do business, as we all know, in Nigeria. But one of the passion is to try and change our country. So we are ready, we at Outsource Global, are ready to suck up the challenges to try to change this. That is why we are doing this. That is why we are in business to try and change our country, to provide employment for youth and women in this country. And more than 50% of our employees, more than 50% of the 700, over 700 people that we have 
employed are actually women. So we, we, we try to, to disrupt or to resist the usual, right? For every 10 agents, there's a team lead. So 90% of those team leads are women. What do you think we can do to encourage more girls in technology? And also, what would you say to the Northern leaders to make them see the need? Um, by creating more awareness, by training them, introducing technology to our primary school system. There's a lot that we can do in that regard. I was not exposed to IT at a very young age. Like I told you, I was born and brought up in Kano. I had my four children in Kano. I was married at a very young age. I, I went to university as a married woman. Um, it was after university that I thought of, my husband encouraged me to go for basic computing skills. So I think if we have one, we introduce IT to, to schools in the north and introduce more training centers, create more awareness that they can even train in IT and still conserve the tradition or, uh, uh, yeah, conserve the tradition and they can even work from home if they actually have IT skills. So if the northern leaders can invest more in training youth and women in northern Nigeria to, in IT, I think they will also, if they also spend a lot in creating more awareness, there will be a lot of me today. So the awareness is not there. The uh, investment in training is not there. If we actually do these two things, I think uh, it will change a lot in northern Nigeria. Finally, Amal, as you work towards making Nigeria a premier outsourcing destination, and you're doing it optimistically, um, what do you, where do you see your company in five years? I see my company getting, um, providing employment for over 6,000 people in the next five years. So I could do 700 in just two years. I've already opened three centers from one to, to three centers. I'm going to offer, open the, first, uh, the fourth one uh, in, in Northeast very soon. So I, I will keep opening centers. I will keep on increasing based on my client's need. The, client, the existing clients I have today, we have plans for expansion up to middle of next year. It's already, we have a timetable of expansion. So you can imagine if I get new ones, how the expansion, they keep on closing businesses and moving them to Nigeria because we are giving them better service, better accent, better delivery, efficiency, all that. Yours is an inspiring story and we wish you all the best. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. That was Amal Hassan, founder Outsource Global, a business process outsourcing firm providing services for clients across the world. Reality is that India shares a lot of similarities with Nigeria, so I like the fact that Amal researched that what they have done and has gone ahead to replicate the same here. Personally, it was thrilling to see hundreds of young people working with clients in different parts of the world from the city of Abuja. Interestingly, many of them actually communicate with foreign accent despite the fact that they don't have international passport yet. <laughs> Another example of how far a determined Nigerian can go to make a difference. It's a wrap on this edition of the show. But the conversation continues online. Join us on social media. Remember, you can watch these and previous editions of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog, cfatech.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukemeka Agbata. <laughs>